right, next up we have Nancy Junga and Krista Young from Psychology <laughs> presenting on cognitive biases towards self-harm as a function of NSSI history. Hello everyone, I'm Krista Young. And I'm Nancy Junga. And we're part of the Suicide Prevention and Research Collaborative here on campus, which is directed by Dr. Jennifer Muhlenkamp in the Psychology Department. So our mission is really to prevent as well as better understand factors that are related to suicide, which is the second leading cause of death of young adults in the United States. Non-suicidal self-injury, or NSSI as we call it, is the direct and intentional damage of bodily tissue without the intent to die. It's estimated that about one in five young adults have engaged in NSSI worldwide. Past research has shown that those who currently engage in this type of self-injury are quicker to identify with self-damaging stimuli, such as images or words, and experience more negative thought patterns, such as hopelessness and suicidal ideation, relative to those who don't self-injure. However, what we don't know is how these features are impacted once individuals have stopped self-injury. It would be valuable to determine whether these mindsets that one experiences while self-injuring persist once they've stopped. This information may give clinicians and mental health professionals better insight into prevention and treatment. This gap in literature is what our study aimed to address. Our study included 277 college students with a history of self-injury. We split participants into two groups, those who are currently self-injuring and those who had self-injured in the past but had stopped within the last year. Students' implicit biases were assessed. Those are the knee-jerk reactions that they had to self-injury um, stimuli. We also looked at variables related to the negative thought patterns that we mentioned earlier. Um, and what we found is that those who had stopped self-injuring experienced less identification with that self-injurious stimuli. And we also found, relative to those who are currently self-injuring, and we also found that of those who had stopped self-injuring, they experienced lower levels of hopelessness and the urge to act um, immediately to relieve their pain. Our results suggest that the mindset that people experience while self-injuring may not persist throughout their lifetime. This gives an important window of opportunity to intervene with treatment and prevent future relapse of self-injury. Additionally, these variables could be prime targets for cognitive therapies to treat and prevent non-suicidal self-injury. And by decreasing the risk of this, um, we decrease the risk of young adults um, of considering and acting on thoughts of suicide. It is our hope that through innovat innovative research and putting our science into practice, that we can continue making longer strides toward creating a world where no one lives, no, one, no lives are lost to suicide. Thank you. College students, so, so pretty much 18 to 22, 24. Not necessarily. There wasn't necessarily a trend with age. Was it by gender? I think that typically we see more non suicidal self injury conducted by females than males as a whole, but within our particular sample, didn't necessarily see that. Well, that also could be a matter of um, who is reporting the self-injury, so mm -hmm. whether females or males want to re disclose that information to us. So. Mm -hmm. 